Here is a demonstration on applying the Kendrick traction splint. This splint is a very nice lightweight splint and uh, it uses uh, telescoping or rather uh, segmented pull and designed for femur fractures, in particular mid shaft femur fractures amenable to traction. The hardest part about using this device is the ankle. When you first pull out the ankle piece, it's usually wadded up in a knot, so you orient yourself to it by identifying that triangle and the pad, and that gets you set up. You do your normal assessment in the sense of identifying that it's a femur fracture, um, you know, eliminating other major injuries. Uh, that would be uh, contraindications for applying this. And uh, typical contraindications are any fracture or, or joint or leg problem uh, from the knee down. And if the hip is dislocated, which is the femoral head is popped out of the uh, pelvic uh, socket, then you can't use this. So since we don't have x-ray vision, one of the easiest ways to determine this is just by applying gentle traction, as I'll demonstrate here, warn the patient that you're going to feel a little pull and maybe putting three to five pounds of pressure. Um, normally the patient will, you know, be surprised or startled. They're scared. It hurts. And then it immediately gets better. If the pain diminishes dramatically with this traction, then you know you're good. Have someone take over traction for you. You notice I didn't measure the other leg like all the standard tests do. Well, I don't because it's stupid. We're not trying to make the injured leg match the uninjured leg. We're trying to reduce the pain and presumably reducing the pain is a result of essentially more normally aligning the bone ends inside. The thigh strap should be the very first strap you put on. It's very easy to place and uh, it's critical since your patient will almost always be oriented and conscious. Um, if you're spending time treating a, a femur fracture, they are probably awake. Have them help you in terms of clearing their nads or whatever else might get in the way that's uh, tender. Again, while your assistant is holding traction, you go ahead and apply the ankle piece. It's got two tensioning systems. And again, you need to play with this a little bit of the time, but the you have a way to tense it from the green strap and one from the blue strap. Now we set out the telescoping or correction, the articulating rod. And you take your best guess. The end nearby the hip fits in the socket really well. And now you've created essentially the main structure. So traction is being held. The next hardest part is finding that little yellow loop, which is usually squished flat. Pop it over the end of the traction splint. It'll have a little uh, notched bar. And for demonstration purposes, I'm showing this from two directions, how you can tension uh, the, or create traction actually always using the patient's uh, guidance. Now, if you're Assistant was holding traction properly at the knee. Um, ideally, they will have reached the perfect amount of traction, and all you're doing is uh, adjusting the straps to take over for the assistant. You have three other straps and normally left on the bar is going to be the middle strap which goes over the knee. That's probably the only strap that makes essentially has a priority. So you always start with that strap. If you don't, it's no big deal, but that essentially helps uh, pin down the pole to the leg. The purpose of the straps is twofold. Primarily, it needs to marry the pole to the leg because if the leg can bend, then there's no traction. The second uh, possibility uh, for the strap is has to do with the thigh strap. And when the thigh strap is put on, uh, that can serve as a compressive dressing. Remember, if you have a broken femur, you have hemorrhaging in the muscles. 
and so that strap can serve as essentially a compressive dressing which may very well be useful when you have the femur fracture that you can you can see on the outside like the muscle is kind of like bulging out or the bone lost its um, integrity if not you just place it middle of the thigh So a couple of points is you have the splint sticking out from the ankle. This can make loading the patient problematic. So you want to try to adjust the splint as close so or the end where the hook is uh, for traction at the uh, foot. You want it as close to the sole of the foot as you can make it. Since this splint comes in fixed length segments, if you run out of ways to adjust it at the foot, what you can do is go up to the thigh strap and either by loosening it or tightening it create an adjustable end at the hip. So you can really get this down to where the the uh, end of the traction splint is just past the foot. Again, in an ambulance you might have the option of loading them backwards. In a helicopter if you're flying them out Sometimes space is so limited, the traction splint dumb dog. The traction splint will become a problem. So the final thing is is to check the patient again. You have the traction splint in place. When you first applied traction, you probably needed more uh, traction strength, if you will because the muscles were in spasm. But over time, the muscles start to relax. So say you've put the traction splint on, you have the patient loaded, then you might want to ask again, you know, is your leg feeling better or worse or staying the same? If the patient tells you the leg is starting to ache more, carefully back off on the traction and ask the patient to tell you when it gets better again. When it gets better again, lock in the traction. As far as the whole National Registry retarded 10% or 15 pounds, 10% of body weight or 15 pounds, that's pretty stupid and meaningless in the field because we don't have anything to measure that accurately, even on the Sager splints. God only knows how accurate those coils are. You're not treating the damn splint or the coil or the dynamometer. You are addressing the traction to resolve patient's uh, pain maybe in a surgical suite or in a hospital the poundage makes sense hope this helps